All organisations experience growing pains when the size grows, the complexity of management grows and things get complicated and nothing seems to work as well. We've experienced that as church over the last uh, 10 years or so as we've grown. It's been very exciting and new things have started, but the complexity of management and how do you cater for everything, that's exactly what the church in Jerusalem was experiencing and we get to see how they managed it, what the blockage was and what the solution was and how the word of God, well, it seemed to have stalled in its growth in the community, but something restarted. Let's have a look. Let's see what it was. We're in Acts chapter 6 and verse 1. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained about the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. So, it's an interesting little aside, and partly it talks about pastoral care and caring for the needy amongst their own community, amongst the church. And it shows us a few priorities, but also what has been happening, what has stalled the gospel growth, it's the fact that things have been going so well and so many people have come to Christ, but um, amongst that, the percentage of um, the needy, you remember back in Acts chapter 2, uh, we were told that when there were no, they, they sold their houses in order to care for their own members. And back in the last chapter, again, uh, there were no needy persons among them because if uh, people saw need, they'd sell property. That's what Joseph, who became Bar- uh, Barnabas, was so encouraging about. He sold a field and he was a son of encouragement. And Ananias and Sapphira had sold the f- their house and had lied about the price as they had vowed to give all the money to this work and then uh, secretly kept it for themselves. And that was the terrible incident we saw back at the start of Acts 5. But they're all around this issue of caring for the poor amongst them, and particularly the widows. And this situation has arisen that there are so many, and how do you manage all that? The apostles have been receiving all the money and they have been the ones distributing it. And now there is a complaint about equal shares and who's getting more. And it seems that the the uh, Greek the women from Greek descent who were Christians had uh, were complaining that the uh, ones from uh, Hebrew uh, who grown up in Israel itself uh, they're all Jews who become Christians, but the the Hebrew Jewish women are getting more than the Jews born overseas, or so at least uh, they suspect. And so there's this fight on, and who do you go to? You've got to go to the people who have the money and control it and who are the distributors, who are the apostles. And it's this crisis because um, it's a wonderful ministry that they're doing, and it's wonderful that they're caring for their people in such a way, but it's just tied them up, but so much so that the apostles aren't doing what Jesus has told them to do, the commission he gave them to go uh, and take his message of salvation and be his witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. They're here locked up in this battle over a good thing, uh, trying to make things fair. And so they come to the decision. They've hit a bottleneck in a minute. There's these growing pains and they... Um, they think about it and and they make a, a, a what turns out to be a really wise decision, right? Prayerfully as well, they they appoint the seven other guys, seven others who uh, will take over the management of the food distribution. Uh, and so, what's happening? Well, they're recognizing that there's a priority to, in their gifting and in the mission that Jesus has given them. That this is not helping the gospel cause. And so they are there, um, and we're here, he, they say, to uh, attend to the word of God and to prayer, right? Um, you're locking us up 
in really good things and and sometimes it's that way that just because someone has operated in that way in ministry and in a church for so long maybe they need to be freed up to do other things that can happen whether it's staff or whether it's senior leadership or other things um, but uh, there are right things to be doing and there are good things to be doing and there are better things uh, and so they choose the better they choose for the word of God and prayer because what is going to make people alive again it's the gospel it's the word of god uh what is going to bring that about well it's prayer because we the church needs to pray and so that is what the apostles have been set aside to do by jesus and so that's what they're going to get on with so they find these guys but it's not just anyone right they don't hand over the responsibility carelessly no they think deliberately through what's the sort of people we need to be running this this aid ministry within our network and they decide it has to be uh, people who are full of the spirit and wisdom who are from among us and known to be full of the spirit and wisdom, right? That is that they, the, the Holy Spirit is obviously at work in their life and they are wise, right? Christian and, uh, and uh, not clever necessarily, but wise, thoughtful, measured. Uh, and those two things are vitally important. If you're going to have managers of project to take the load off, you don't want people who are not wise who are going to create problems. And so the apostles aren't uh, going to you know, exacerbate the issue. Uh, and they don't want people who are not um, gospel focused, right, and full of the Holy Spirit and so know what the main aim is. Because that will, uh, lots of things could happen then. Uh, one, they could pressure the apostles and saying, well, this is such an important ministry. And you, what do you mean? This is the sole focus for the day. The, the main game is the word of God and prayer. Um, but also, as they minister to those that they care for, whatever gospel they cling to is going to influence and shape their, the people that they are loving. And, and so if they're not full of the Spirit... Uh, they're going to exercise it in a way that's either ungodly or they're not going to be pointing people to Christ in the long run. And so it has to be these people who are full of the spirit and wisdom. And there are seven of them and they do a great job and uh, they tend to it and the apostles get on with what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, they, they commission them so that everyone recognizes these are the guys to go to, right? It's a, it's a, it's a grand announcement in, in some sense that these are now the authorized leaders of this ministry and what do we find out that the word of god spread the the number of disciples increased rapidly the blockage was solved the the thing that was causing the pain and the grief uh got sorted out and it meant the apostles could get on with doing what they were meant to be doing getting on with the word of god and prayer uh the people were being taken care of well within the church and being loved and looked after and uh, and we find out a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. It's a it's a strange comment. That is, they see what's happening, and they see uh, these are these are Jewish priests who are coming from uh, the the Levi the tribe of Levi, and they are they see how people are being ministered to, and they see how it's all happening in a much better way. And that it's it's like Gamaliel said yesterday right leave it alone and let's see if this is from god or not and even now the priests those who had been fighting against jesus who have been complicit in his death even there now they are going this stuff's right jesus is god i want to give my life to him and so they're converted too and so it's wonderful that the you know solving this little dispute and the blockage in in the growth uh, giving it over to others, empowering others to do some of the ministry and letting go of the reins themselves. The apostles were able to get on with what they're doing and the word of God flourished and people from all sorts of areas and walks of life are giving their lives to Christ. This is great. Uh, how does that help us? Well, maybe we need to think through and this is something to reflect on. Have we become the blockage in it in the ministries that we're involved in? Um, not that we are creating problems, but we're just the blockage in our... Um, ministry is that our time is really really devoted to this one thing um is there something more important or is there someone else we can be training up and in, empowering uh that's if we're a ministry leader um on the other hand uh for the rest of the church um 
well, maybe we are the solution. Maybe we are the, the Stevens and the Timothy, uh, so the, uh, the Phillips and the Procuruses and the Nicanors, people, some of whom went down in history because Stephen, you know, we're going to find out about him and, and Philip became an evangelist, right? He, he, you know, he did have gifts in other things than administration. Uh, and, but the others, who knows what happened to them? We're not referred to again in the scriptures, and but um, it's wonderful that they were there because their service meant that the gospel flourished, right? As other people could get on with doing the the work of word and prayer, uh, and so maybe maybe it's time to think: Am I one of those? Right? Could I step up in some way? What's some way I could serve to to free up time from those who are better gifted elsewhere? to to serve in the way that god's going to use them and so that we we, have, we want to work together so that the gospel flourishes so the church grows up and out well even more than the church growing up and out that jesus is glorified inside and outside as lord and savior that he is the king and his name is known that's who we want to uh whose kingdom to grow and people to be pointed towards the lord jesus christ why don't we pray father we thank you for this problem in the early church caused by growing pains but father help us to be realistic and to know when we reach blockages in our personal ministries and in our church life uh, and help us to be wise and to be full of the spirit and to gather around us as an organization as a church people who are like-minded to and but gifted in different ways father uh, where there are those of us who take on too much responsibility ourselves Help us to know uh, how to be, um, what what needs to be prioritised and how to hand that over well and raise people up. And for those of us who uh, are looking for things to do and wonder how we can help, Father, we pray, please, that we'll be bold. Uh, you'll help us all to be full of the spirit and of wisdom that Christ might be honoured in our lives and in our work and in our gifting. And we pray, please, for your gospel to go forward. Help us to, if there are changes to make as a church, to do them uh, and that will just leverage um, our gifting. And we pray that you would work in us and through us to keep expanding your kingdom. Thank you for the joy of being part of your work. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you for church on Sunday. Maybe live face-to-face -face in person. You can still book into some of our services. They're not booked out. Uh, others are. Uh, or uh, catch you for a devotional on Monday. God bless everyone.